What's up guys, welcome back to your daily dose of fibromyalgia. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Fortnite's Battle Royale mode. Should you download it? Let's find out. So Fortnite is an early access game developed in conjunction by People Can Fly Games and Epic Games. It's a co-op sandbox survival game and has been released for a paid early access to the main game. The Battle Royale mode was added in recently and it is 100% free to play for now. A free to play version of Fortnite is expected to release in sometime of 2018. Fortnite Battle Royale is almost a complete carbon copy of PUBG. Adopting the drop-in feature and steady shrinking map features, Fortnite plays similar but just has a different aesthetic. If I had to be completely honest, I prefer the graphical fidelity found in PUBG. However, the building aspects and crafting aspects found in Fortnite do add an additional level of fun that isn't quite present in PUBG. When dropping into a game, it is important to pick a location and stick with it. Do not just change your mind halfway through while airborne. Pick a location and drop fast. Assume your opponents know the map better than you, and don't rely on dropping far enough away from everyone else to survive, as the storm system will probably disappoint you. Also, you're never quite too far away from a weapon anyway, so don't get too paranoid looking for that perfect drop location. I probably spent hours doing this myself, until I realized that the drop location was kind of even and fair throughout the entire game. You do find some spots are better to drop than others, but kind of focus on getting to a location first rather than finding that perfect location, if that makes sense. Now that we're here, let's go ahead and talk about what I liked. I did like how the graphical style wasn't compromised for this game mode. The game mode still feels legitimate as if it was built for this game mode. Animations work well with the overall design aesthetic and it's easy to spot players sprinting in open fields thanks to the dust clouds trailing behind them. I love the audio cues that you get from the maps. You can hear the storm approaching, the heavenly hum of loot chests nearby, gunshots, and footsteps in realistic 3D surround. So that became a really great aspect of the game and, and was um, kind of a immersive and game altering effect if you didn't quite have good enough headphones or if you decided to play through your speakers on your monitor or on your TV. So my suggestion would be for all those people who really want to become better at Fortnite um, Battle Royale mode and want to possibly get down to the top 10 or even win the game, use headphones. It's very, very important. First and foremost, it is very important that I disclose that this game is early access. It is also important to note that there may be changes to the game by the time the full release comes around. So some of my complaints here may just be for nothing for the time being, but I gotta, I gotta address them. The game feels very laggy and buggy. Frames dropped very often when I played the Battle Royale mode. This was very difficult to deal with in a game mode such as Battle Royale when survival is key. Also, because of the lag and maybe it was just the bugginess of the game, hit detection seemed off sometimes. Um, as a result, your gunshots don't always land. If you're sniping, you don't necessarily will get you know you won't necessarily get that impressive sniper kill because the shots may not land exactly where you intend and also because of this shotguns seem to have an unrealistic range which gave other players ridiculous advantages that you wouldn't think would be quite possible so when making a strategic decision to either use a assault rifle or a regular sniper rifle you could have possibly taken that person out with a shotgun and been a lot easier for it. Um, there's been times where I switched to a pistol thinking, okay, I need a little bit of extra range at this point and still ended up getting taken out by a guy with a shotgun. So let's just say when in doubt, use a shotgun in this game mode, at least for the time being until they fix that. I think that um, this problem with optimization just goes beyond the PC mode as well and goes beyond just my personal rig. I don't have the most powerful PC in the world. I'm running an AMD FX chip that's overclocked currently to about 4.4 gigahertz and an XFX RX 480, um, the eight gigabyte AMD graphics card. And it's more than powerful enough to play games like Overwatch at ultra settings, which you know, for me is above 60 frames per second. And I was also able to play games like Call of Duty World War II at high settings, and I was able to hit about 80 frames per second on average. So I thought of myself, you know, a genius 
and turned off all the optional graphical settings such as grass and shadows, anti-aliasing in order to, you know, appeal to some of the issues that I was having and, and kind of fix those issues. However, this didn't help me at all. Like, so I turned the settings down to low and that still didn't help me. I still had spikes in the frame rate and I was running well over 100 frames per second at this point and the frames would drop all the way down to a measly 20 frames per second. So this makes me think that maybe the issues I was having was more of a network issue or maybe it was an optimization issue on their side. Maybe, you know, it's an issue because of the size of the map or maybe it was an issue because of the amount of players that they have on screen. But it just wasn't a buttery smooth experience for me. And to me, that's a problem when playing a PC game, especially a PC game that is trying to charge for, you know, early access. That's kind of crazy. And it couldn't have been because of my internet connection on this side. And that's because I have a gigabit internet connection. I'll go ahead and show you guys that right now. I have gigabit internet connection. I have no problem in any other game. I have no problem, no lag whatsoever in games like Overwatch. I have no lag, no problem whatsoever. And even games like Call of Duty, I don't really have lag. So this gets me concerned that Fortnite will probably still suffer from these connection and frame rate issues even after the full release, be just because of its overall server size or because it is a free to play game. So I remain hopeful, but I won't necessarily hold my breath for that full release. And last but not least, I think I have to mention it, and you guys are probably going to hate me for it, but I'm going to mention it, is the pricing structure. Fortnite currently has incentives for people to support the game during early access. And I don't necessarily have an issue with early access games. Um, I myself, I bought Ark Survival Evolved. I've um, purchased a DayZ. I've purchased a number of early access games. However, I do have issues with early access games marketing to younger audiences and also taking these games in early access and selling the copies in major brick and mortar retailers. So I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but Fortnite actually had displays up in Target and Walmart. Not, not quite sure if they still do, but they have displays up in, in Target and Walmart and were selling full fledged copies of this game as if the game was done and... Um, I don't think on the case or anything, um, any of the display or any information said it was in early access. And even if it did say it was in early access, kids or parents who buy the games for the kids wouldn't know what that means. So they're assuming that the game is ready. This is the final product. This is going to be the final version of the game. And those things can change. We, we've had um, early access games like DayZ um, or Ark Survival, just the, the ones that I've played really, um, go through insurmountable and huge changes from the time that I first purchased them to months later or even years later. Some games don't even ever come out of early access. So that really kind of gets me kind of weary about some of the practices that the game industry is doing right now, but primarily what Fortnite is doing right now is it's kind of shady. I'm also against the actual price ranges of these like release packages or for people who are trying to support the early access game the pricing structure seems kind of off to me for a game that's early access once again I'll, I'll keep saying that but that's because i really want you guys to understand what i'm saying if you guys haven't bought this game yet really consider what i'm saying before you guys pay for this game fortnite claims that it will release as a free-to-play title eventually so as of right now it's not free to play battle royale is free to play but the uh, um, actual game itself the full version of the game the pve event the meat and potatoes of the game is early access and you have to pay for it to gain early access it's slated to be free to play for sometime in 2018 but right now it's actually really late in 2017 so if it releases in early 2018 why don't you just wait for the free to play version and then if you really want certain upgrades just pay for the microtransactions you know you save a few bucks that way and I feel like the only amount of money that someone should give this game or any game that's in early access is about 20 30 bucks no more than that really however the guys over at epic games thought it was okay to have gaming packages that go way up past even what I would consider paying for a triple a game so for those of us who have a limited gaming budget or who have actual bills and other things in life that they have to pay for um there is a limit to what I would consider paying for one game, particularly even a game that I haven't even played yet. So I played the Battle Royale version of this game. I haven't played the PvE version of this game. And so I'm not really sure that that game is for me. So I can't justify 
paying triple A prices for a game that is in this mode. So if you guys don't know the prices right now of some of their packages, why don't you just guys just go ahead and just give me a guess. Go ahead and write it down in the comment section. Pause the video for a second. Write it down in the comment section. What do you think that they're charging for this game? Were they doing a No Man's Sky situation and charging 60 bucks for basically an indie game? No, it wasn't 60 bucks not even 80 bucks and i can even deal with 80 bucks because i think that that is more so the trend of what a full game release it costs about 80 bucks but when you look at some of these packages you can buy for fortnite the largest amount that you can invest as a founder is a ridiculous over the top 120 dollars, and that is for the founders edition fortnite it's completely ridiculous it's complete trash to spend 120 dollars on a free to play eventually free to play early access game. I don't care what they give you. I know they give you two other copies for your friends so they can get involved. But like I said, this game should be free to play right now as is, you know, and then they can add in microtransactions if they want to make some money or they can add in founders packages if they want to make some money. But 120 bucks, that's borderline insane. I think that as a free free to play title, they should focus on first getting people on board to play their game. That's why they're going to eventually go to this free to play model, like such as League of Legends or any other free to play games that you guys may have played. They have a model to, hey, you know, let's let's first get people to play the game and then we can charge them for premium features. Come on, guys. This is not hard. So first, they need to focus on getting people on board to play the game. So they did this by kind of incorporating the Battle Royale. I think it was a great first step. But they could release this game as a full free-to-play early access game. It's not really a big deal. They can then add in their incentive packages ranging, I think, from 15 to maybe in the crazy range of $40. But that should be the absolute most that they, that they should charge for their founders. Anyways, I digress. Fortnite does seem like an appealing title. It would be releasing as a free-to-play game in 2018, but has no date but has no exact date secured yet. So we don't know the exact date, but it is going to release in 2018, unfortunately. But because they're trying to get more funding, the game is currently in early access, but only to those who want to fork out the minimum requirement of 30 bucks. Who knows? Maybe the, the game will be fantastic when it's fully released. My suggestion is to wait until then and hold on to your money. Unless, of course, you really, really, really like survival shooters and been waiting for Fortnite for quite some time, then I can see maybe you guys want to go ahead and fork out that $30, maybe even you know, want to fork out that $60 for it. I can see that at that point. But to me, I saw the preview, I think, just this past summer. And I was like, oh, that looks like a decent game. And to me, it holds, no, it holds nothing else than me seeing a preview. I'm like, oh, it's a good looking game. Or I, I would try it. You know, That's kind of my opinion on the situation. Also, it's really hard for me to recommend buying Fortnite simply because there are other games that are coming out that are in the same field or other games that have been announced or that are already out that are in the same field or genre as this game. And due to the graphical art style, it may not be everyone's cup of tea. Like Fortnite kind of after a while looks like a kid's game. It kind of feels like a kid's game. And sometimes you kind of want more realistic or more um, gritty looking graphics to kind of convey, you know, the amount of immersion possible in, in order to make your experience as as immersive as it could be. So like those games are like State of Decay 2. OK, it was announced for spring of 2018. Escape from Tarkov. I think that's in beta right now. And obviously PUBG. That's, that's a considerable option. Because if you want to play a more realistic battle royale shooter, you know, you can squad up on PUBG and play right now. Just don't say nigger or else, you know, you got to apologize for that. Anyways, tell me what you guys think. Did you pay for access to Fortnite? Do you guys like the PvE mode? Comment down below. And if you're new here, the only cure for fibromyalgia is for you guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So hit that big red subscription button down below. And if you want to hear more of me and my sexy voice on a regular basis... Let me know. Anyways, guys, I've been Eriku, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> oh, man, you guys really thought that I would do that to you. It's okay. Uh, I'll actually go ahead and show you the remainder of the fight, just so you guys don't get super mad at me. Once again, I've been Eriku. See you guys next time. Peace.